Welcome to Portage United Church of Christ. I'm Pastor Mac. Pastor Mary Kay and I are delighted that you have decided to join us for this August 13th Sunday service. We are continuing our theme of Sabbath as Resistance based on the book of the same name by Walter Brueggemann. Today, Mary Kay will be talking about resistance to coercion. What did it mean then? And what might it mean for us today? Let's begin by bringing ourselves to this present moment in all aspects of our being, grounding ourselves in our bodies, in our minds, in our emotions, and in our spirits. Allowing the truth of the present to be acknowledged with all of our hopes and dreams, our concerns, our failures, and our victories. In all of these things, God is present. God is present with us, and we are present with God. Holy love guides us, so let's take a deep breath as we companion together on this sacred journey. Take a deep breath of the assurance of God's love as we share this sacred time together. Thank you for joining us today at PUCC. We are called to worship. From the bustle of the world and the silence of our wilderness, we pause together for worship. At times we can be a grumbling people, quick to focus on the lack and the gaps. Yet in love, God, you listen to our cries and provide for us. Impatiently, we are a searching people, craving peace and purpose. And with patience, God, you offer us hope and sustain us. Help us to be a thankful people, recognizing your love for us in all its abundance. Through your presence, God, you turn us towards you and nourish us. In this time of worship, let us open our hearts and be filled.
Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle of the heart. Spirit draw near. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit draw near. Our opening prayer. Holy One of Israel. In a culture characterized by restless anxiety, we are indeed weary and heavy laden. Teach us about Sabbath rest. Give us a new understanding of how that gift can free us from our commodity-driven existence into the life of neighborly relationship. In the name of the one who calls us to take his yoke upon us where we can find rest, Jesus the Christ, amen. Our scripture is taken from Psalm 81. Sing, shout, be joyful, play music, blow horns at the new moon, the full moon, the holy days, the Sabbath. Let this rejoicing be your practice. 
Hear the still, small voice. You called on me in trouble, and I helped you. Keep listening. Open your heart, and I will fill it up. My longing is for you, as yours is for me. I want to whisper in your ear and satisfy your hunger with honey from the rock. So we continue in our series about keeping Sabbath and Sabbath as resistance. Our um, theme for today is Sabbath as resistance to coercion, which um, I will say was something I thought a little, huh? Coercion to what? So it was kind of good for me to explore this a little bit. Last week we heard the Ten Commandments as uh, recorded by the book of Exodus. This week we're in the book of Deuteronomy, which is two books later after Leviticus, that really riveting, probably the most riveting book of the Bible. Um, so this week we're in the book of Deuteronomy where once again Moses reminds the people of the covenant that God made with them while they were in the desert. And along with 30 additional chapters through, of guidance in this book, Moses also repeats the Ten Commandments in chapter 5. Now both sets of commandments in Exodus and in Deuteronomy are really pretty much the same. There's just slight variations, tweaking of a word here and there. And this is true of the fourth commandment, which is the commandment to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. It's basically the same command with a couple of notable changes. So I'm going to read both versions, and the words will be up there. And I just want to see if you can hear them. I don't know that I necessarily would have, except that now I know they're there. So listen and see if you can pick out the changes. There will not be a test on this. All right, on the left is Exodus. Remember the Sabbath day and treat it as holy. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. Not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your animals or the immigrant who is living with you. Because the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything that is in them in six days, but rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Here's Deuteronomy. Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do not do any work on it. Not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your oxen or donkeys or any of your animals or the immigrant who is living among you so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. So we're going to start with that last verse in Deuteronomy, verse 15. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. This is why you keep the Sabbath. In Exodus, during 40 years of wandering, the people were commanded to keep the Sabbath day because God rested. And if God can take a rest... Surely, the rest of us can take a rest. In fact, the rest of us need a rest. So in Deuteronomy, the Hebrew children are now standing at the River Jordan, and they're about to enter the Promised Land, which is a land of milk and honey, right? It is going to be a rich, fertile land. This Promised Land is going to produce so richly for a formerly enslaved people, a people who groaned under the ruthlessness of the pharaohs, the book of Exodus tells us. The promised land was going to produce so abundantly for these people that they will at last, at last, 
get to feel safe and happy. And the more they produce, the happier and the safer they're going to feel. And soon they will come to believe that the more they have, the more they acquire, the more they produce, they'll be the happiest and the safest of all. And guess what? The sky's the limit in this abundant and fertile land. Moses knows, as Walter Brueggemann points out in his book, Sabbath as Resistance, Moses knows that prosperity breeds amnesia. He knows that it won't take long for the Israelites to forget that they once lived under an unbearable system of coercion, a system in which they had to meet impossible production goals, impossible schedules of more and more bricks, more and more planting and harvesting, more, produce more, produce more, or else. So Moses now gives the people a new reason, or perhaps an additional reason for keeping the Sabbath. Remember, you were a slave. You were a slave, but now God has freed you. You were a slave, but God has freed you from that coercive system. Now, many of us sitting in this room are privileged enough to feel pretty disconnected from slavery. Yet, but, none of us is disconnected from the coercive system of the rat race. The coercive system that tells us to do more, be more, have more, or else. Keep your lawn beautifully manicured and your house immaculate, or else your property values will drop. You better keep it in good condition, or else your neighbors are going to think you're a lousy homeowner. Keep your kids busy with all those sports and after-school activities, <laughs> or else they might get bored and get into trouble. <laughs> or you know what else? They're not going to get into a good school. You better pick up that extra shift at work. You better volunteer an extra day this week, or else people are going to think you don't care. You better smile and look cheerful, even though you are struggling right now. You better smile and look cheerful, even though your closest relationship is disintegrating right in front of you. Or maybe you've just got a pounding headache. Just keep smiling, or else people are going to think you're weak and you're nothing but a complainer. And you better not act too black, or too gay, or too queer, or too anything else, or else people are going to get put off, and they're going to get scared. Let me repeat. Remember, you were a slave. And God has brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. On the Sabbath, whatever day we keep it, we don't have to do more. 
We don't have to control more. We don't have to know more. On the Sabbath, we remember that we are free. And here's the thing. In Deuteronomy, keeping Sabbath is not simply taking a pause so that you can be refreshed and restored. It is an occasion for reimagining all of social life away from coercion and competition and to compassionate solidarity. So says Walter Brueggemann. Sabbath is an occasion for reimagining all of social life away from coercion and competition and to compassionate solidarity. Now, if that seems like a stretch to you, go back to that second variation in the fourth commandment. Do not do any work on it. Not you, not your sons or your daughters, not your male or female servants, not your oxen or your donkeys or your animals or your dog or your cat or the immigrant who is living among you so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. Now, not everyone is equal in skill sets or abilities. Not everyone has equal access to consumer goods. Not everyone is equal in home ownership. And certainly not everyone is equal in lawn maintenance or in writing or in sports or in music. But on this one day, on the Sabbath, all are like you. All are equal in value and worth because everybody is equal in rest. Everybody needs it. Everybody deserves it. When we regularly take a Sabbath day, we carry this reimagined social life with us, one that is grounded in covenant, not coercion. We take this reimagined social life with us into the other six days of the week. When we regularly keep a Sabbath, we live all seven days differently. When you regularly keep a Sabbath day, not a Sabbath hour or two. Perhaps we are more attuned to where we purchase our clothes or what kind of chocolate or coffee we buy in order to avoid production that uses sweatshop and child labor. Maybe we become more supportive of the needs of our coworkers and our friends and our fellow congregants who need Sabbath time but find it difficult to take. It could be that we offer to help with child care. It could be that we offer to help with transportation or something in order to give someone an opportunity to rest just like me. Sabbath rest is God's gift of freedom to us. It is God's gift of freedom from the coercion of the rat race that we live in. The coercion to do more, to be more, to work more. It is a gift 
we do not have to earn. It is a gift we deserve. Let us receive this gift. We need to receive the gift. If you want a better world, receive the gift of Sabbath, of freedom from coercion. And then we can be transformed and offer this gift to the world. Let us pray. God of the abundant enough, you are the fullness our souls long for. When we fill the space around us with the clutter of possessions or a busy calendar, when we seek isolating comfort or frenetic distraction, calm our hearts, hold our wounded places tenderly, Release us from the fear of scarcity. Ground us in the certainty of the goodness and beauty that flow from you in abundance. O Pilgrim God, you ask us to live simply. Compassionate God, we remember those who pack lightly, not by choice, but by necessity. Refugees, the desperate poor, orphans, the abandoned, and victims of natural disasters. Move us to compassion, draw us to wisdom, and compel us to act. We seek to embody your hands, providing for the needs of others, as well as your heart, opening to strangers and hospitality. O Pilgrim God, you ask us to live simply. Our Liberator, you call us into freedom, where we are captive to patterns, ideas, or systems that constrict the flourishing you have created for us. Free us. Where we are burdened by messages and images that diminish our love of neighbor and of self, free us. Turn our whole beings to you. Gently open our hands to let go of all that weighs us down so that we may receive your joyful simplicity. O Pilgrim God, you ask us to live simply. Winnowing God, you ask us to release, let go, surrender, and yield all that we can in service of making space for what is most essential. Sustain us on the path of simplifying our lives and traveling on this earth more lightly so that we no longer live beyond what can be sustained. We pray in Jesus' name and speak together the words he taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm so glad you could be with us for worship this week or whatever week it is that you are joining us. I hope that this service has been meaningful and challenging for you as well. My deepest desire for you is that you are beginning to think a little bit about how you might keep Sabbath in your life and receive the gift of freedom and transformation that you can share with the world. 
as you go forth into the world this week. I invite you to please join me in these words of common commission. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God who creates us in love, the grace of Jesus who offers us rest, and the sustenance of the Holy Spirit that carries us through be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thus I'll move 